Hi, Gunners Recaps here. Today, we will be looking at the 2013 Japanese science fiction horror film, By Location. The first scene features an artist named Shinobu Takamura, attempting to create a masterpiece of a balcony view for an upcoming art exhibition. Meanwhile, the doorbell rings, and when she answers it, she discovers a man. The man introduces himself as Masaru Komura, who has recently moved to the fifth floor of the same apartment. Masaru appears to be partially blind, resulting in poor eyesight. He greets Shinobu and gives her a small gift to begin their new friendship. Both of them begin talking, and as time passes, a simple greeting evolves into a relationship. Following this, Shinobu begins living happily with Masaru in his flat. However, Masaru keeps persuading his parents to accept Shinobu as their daughter-in-law. One evening after work, Masaru asks Shinobu if she went to the grocery store that day because he thought he saw her there. However, due to his poor eyesight, he is unsure. Shinobu responds by saying she went to the dry cleaners that day. Both of them dismiss it, believing that it is due to Masaru's poor eyesight. The next day, Shinobu goes to the grocery store, and when she pays the bill, the shopkeeper accuses her of using counterfeit money. The shopkeeper informs her that she previously paid the currency with the same serial number. She also shows her the CCTV footage of her paying the bill at the cash register. Shinobu is taken aback when she sees the footage because she was home. Detective Kano arrives and takes her with him. Shinobu tries to explain that she is innocent and there is some confusion, to which Kano responds that he knows she is innocent. He then pulls out two currencies with the same serial number and shows them to her. A few moments later, one of the currencies automatically vanishes from his grasp, leaving Shinobu stunned and perplexed. Following this, the detective takes her to a house where she meets the meeting's organizer, Makoto Litsuka, a student named Takumi Mitsurai, and a housewife named Mayumi Kadukura, all of whom are bilocation victims. According to Litsuka, bilocation is the appearance of another self in one's vicinity, also known as simultaneously existing incarnations. According to him, they appear in physical form as perfect mimics that no one can distinguish. Because they are forgeries, they eventually vanish. Bilocation has the original person's memories and the ability to acquire new memories. However, the originals are unaware that their lives are being altered. Shinobu initially does not believe anything and walks out of the room. As soon as she exits the room, she comes across her duplicate, which quickly vanishes. After witnessing this, Shinobu becomes terrified, so Litsuko promises to do everything in his power to protect her. Mayumi drives Shinobu back to her house while telling her about her bilocation. She claims that her son has an incurable disease, so she is always with him. Initially, the hospital staff noticed her bilocation and one day, her son was discovered outside of the hospital near death. On closer inspection, she discovers her signature on the discharge form. Since then, her bilocation has frequently abducted her son. Mayumi warns Shinobu that bilocation will take away their dearest one. Shinobu then thinks Masaru is her closest one. Soon, they are interrupted by Mayumi's bilocation, who keeps asking about her son. When Shinobu sees this, she becomes terrified and even confused about the difference between the real and fake. The next day, Shinobu meets Detective Kano, who gives her a small mirror to distinguish between the real person and the bilocation because he says that the bilocation does not have a reflection. Following that, she inquires about the thing that Kano's bilocation wishes to take from him, to which he responds that it has already been taken from him. He then reveals that he was a candidate for promotion until his bilocation attacked his boss, causing him to be demoted. They then go their separate ways, but Shinobu runs into Kano again. She quickly checks her reflection and discovers that it is the bilocation. Getting to know it, Shinobu attempts to flee, but the bilocation attacks her and attempts to kill her. Simultaneously, 
the real Kano arrives and pushes his bilocation away. In the meantime, a truck runs over the bilocation, causing it to vanish. After returning home, Masaru again mentions Shinobu's presence in the grocery store. Shinobu realizes her bilocation is approaching and might harm Masaru, so she joins Litsuka's team. Following that, Litsuka informs her of some ground rules for joining the team. First, she will be checked in the entrance mirror, and second, she will be required to recite all of the members' names every time they meet, because it is the only code for them. This time, she noticed an old member named Kagami, who was away for bilocation research. According to Litsuka, bilocation is one's concentrated version with more intense personalities that appear when one is torn between conflicting emotions. He also reveals that Kano's bilocation manifested itself when he was extremely enraged with his chief, which was more fierce and hateful. Their disappearance is irregular, but the items they're holding last exactly 23 minutes and 57.226 seconds. Kagami reveals that the bilocation can only exist within a 1,414.2135 meter radius of the original. The same night, while watching TV, Shinobu sees the news on Detective Kano, who has shot three people outside the police station. She then quickly calls Litsuka to inquire about the situation. Litsuka asks her to recite the code, and as soon as she does, he summons her. Following this, they all decide to kill Kano's bilocation to end the violence. Just then, they discover that Kano's bilocation has vanished and that it will reappear within a 1.5 kilometer radius of Kano. In the next scene, Litsuka leads them all to the location where they can eliminate Kano's bilocation. After a while, Kano's bilocation reappears and both real and fake get into a fight. Everyone else is unable to differentiate between the real and fake Kano. Meanwhile, the pistol falls beside Takumi, prompting Litsuka to order him to fire. Befuddled, Takumi shoots the real Kano, killing him on the spot. Kano's bilocation then vanishes after a warning that all of them will die. Following this, Shinobu decides to spend a few days alone so that her bilocation cannot reach Masaru. In the hospital, Mayumi gives the mirror to her son and teaches him to distinguish between the real and fake. On the other hand, Takumi is in class when his bilocation approaches him. Takumi begins to flee when he notices this but his bilocation pursues him. He walks into a room, closes the inside door, and calls Litsuka for assistance. But Litsuka requests the code first. Except for Kagami, he recites the names of all the members. Litsuka then forbids him from attacking his bilocation. Takumi follows Litsuka's instructions, causing the bilocation to fall out of the window and vanish. Similarly, Mayumi notices her bilocation approaching and decides to take her son away but her son does not believe she is her birth mother. She then recalls a time in her past when her bilocation emerged. She was so depressed in her life that she once considered killing her son, but she soon regretted it and decided to protect her son. As a result of that strong emotion, her bilocation emerged, and since then, her bilocation has repeatedly abducted the child to protect him. One day, Takumi meets with Shinobu and Mayumi, and express his mistrust to Litsuka. He believes Litsuka purposefully assassinated Kano. He also doubts Litsuka's bilocation, to which Mayumi responds that Litsuka's wife had one. At the same time, Takumi's bilocation arrives and begins attacking him. During this time, Shinobu attacks the bilocation from behind and notices that the damage appears first on the other body, indicating that the person they were conversing with was the fake one. Following this, Shinobu and Mayumi flee, but on the way, Mayumi's bilocation stabs and kills the real Mayumi with a knife. Shinobu gets scared and rushes towards her house. Out of confusion, she is unsure if she is a real one, so she checks herself in a mirror and is relieved to see her reflection. She then meets Litsuka and inquires whether he murdered Kona on purpose. He admits that he did it on purpose because Kona was a danger to everyone. He departs after persuading her to believe in him. Soon after he departs, Kagami asks her to choose between being a wife or an artist, and she chooses to be with Masaru. Since then, 
she has decided to stop painting and devote her time with Masaru. The next day, Kagami takes Shinobu to the sanatorium where Litsuka first met his wife, Sayuri. Shinobu discovers the graves of Sayuri Mitamura and Sayuri Litsuka. According to Kagami, Sayura Mitamura was a patient at the sanatorium for 25 years who committed suicide, whereas Sayuri Litsuka was her bilocation. Litsuka was in love with the bilocation, who vanished after the real Sayuri committed suicide. He claims that Litsuka had made a vow to assist Shinobu in coexisting with bilocation. Kagami also reveals that he lacks bilocation but remains a group member. He then asks her to find the answer to that riddle. As soon as she walks away, another shinobu appears, but she doesn't recognize Kagami. He introduces himself and informs her that she is no longer in danger. Shinobu and her bilocation then arrive at the apartment. When Shinobu climbs the stairs to her apartment, she notices her bilocation and is taken aback. She goes to meet Litsuka to learn the truth. Litsuka reveals that the one living on the sixth floor is Shinobu Kimura, who is still living alone and doesn't recognize Masaru. She is the one who was caught by the shopkeeper using counterfeit money. He also reveals that the house where they used to talk and meet has two similar rooms with red and green curtains, one for originals and the other for bilocation. Kagami is an outlier who always appears in the green room with bilocation, so the red room members don't recognize him. Reciting the members' names distinguishes whether they belong to the red or green groups. Litsuka also reveals another secret. The one who is recently talking to him is by location, and Masaru is in love with her. She is skeptical and wonders how she can see her reflection in the mirror if she is by location. He explains that the real one can only see her reflection, whereas the by location can see both. When she recalls the first meeting, she remembers seeing both reflections, proving her to be by location. He claims that he does not want her to suffer as he did and that this is only possible when the real and bilocation coordinates together. In the next scene, Masaru presents Shinobu with a wedding ring and invites her to meet his parents the following Sunday. The real Shinobu receives a phone call from the art exhibition, informing her that her painting has been selected. When she goes to the exhibition, she notices a painting by her bilocation, Shinobu Takamura. Shinobu's bilocation emerged when she became dissatisfied with her lonely life and decided to give up painting. The one who opened the door was Shinobu's bilocation rather than a real one. Meanwhile, Takumi and his bilocation collaborate to murder Litsuka, claiming that he will not understand their anguish. On the other hand, Shinobu meets her bilocation in a red room where the bilocation requests that Shinobu live her life because she is someone who does not exist. Shinobu is perplexed because she doesn't understand how she can live with a man she doesn't know. As a result, she requests some thought time. Following that, Shinobu and her bilocation enter their respective apartments. Shinobu becomes depressed because she believes she no longer has a reason to live. Meanwhile, Masaru proposes Shinobu's bilocation for marriage. At the same time, Masaru hears someone fall from the balcony. Masaru checks it out from the balcony. It appears that the real Shinobu committed suicide. Shinobu's bilocation also vanishes after saying, the only true thing is that I love you. Masaru turns around, but she doesn't see his partner. On the other end, Shinobu dies, but her bilocation lives as she is pregnant with Masaru's baby. It appears that the new life made her stay. The new life doesn't vanish and neither does Shinobu's bilocation. As a result, the bilocation replaces the real ones. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.